It's a vexed question, and, and generally speaking, I'm an enthusiast for minimally invasive surgery. And I think that I think that in in future times, most cystectomies will be done um, minimally invasively with a robot. Um, at the moment, there isn't really. Uh, the same sort of persuasive evidence that we have, say, in radical prostatectomy, that the robotic approach is superior. Um, we had a very um, large and well-performed uh, randomized trial by uh, Jim Cato and his colleagues um, uh, from the UK, um, which really showed, though there was um, the the planned outcome was a difference in inpatient stay, and that they themselves said that it was it was even though it was statistically different. I think it was eighty one versus eighty three days alive and outside of hospital between the two arms. And though that actually reached statistical significance, I don't think many clinicians would hold a great deal of of stock with that on its own. Um, of course, there are some advantages uh, with a robotic approach. Definitely um, less bleeding, and I think ultimately will translate into a short inpatient stay that wasn't seen in that particular study um but i think the reason why i'm i'm the sort of the old workhorse who's still going on about open surgery um i think the important thing is that the the, the robotic approach must replicate uh, the operation that's done open, the sort of the best oncologic principles and indeed reconstructive principles of the operation itself. Um, and one of the things that I'm particularly uh, concerned about is the urethro ideal anastomosis. Um, now, it seems to be genuinely true that when this is performed robotically, there are a high incidence of urethro ileal strictures. So that's a stricture where the ureter is joined back onto the ileal conduit or the neobladder. There seem to genuinely be more strictures when this is done robotically than open. Um, now, it's difficult to know why that is, um, but I think if the robotic technique um, truly mimics um, the open approach, so a tension-free anastomosis, no torsion, no twisting, no angulation of the ureters, a fantastic blood supply, widely spatulated. Um, I think of all that, and also taking the ureters very, very short, because for two reasons, one, the blood supply comes from the top of the ureter, which allows healing. And also these patients got bladder cancer, so the last thing you need is urethelium. So you really should be taking the ureters as high as possible. I think if those those principles can be replicated perfectly with a the robot. Then I'm I'm sold, and I'm also on the in the robotic camp. But unfortunately, that doesn't now seem to be the case. Um, even that trial uh, that Jim Cato published, even though it was very small numbers, and they did this was actually only reported in the sort of additional data that came with the study. They actually had a a higher um, ureteroidal stricture rate in in the robotic arm than the open arm. Um, so, and that's that can be a real burden for patients when that occurs. So, I do think that's important. It's a fascinating discussion between the robotic approach and the open approach. But I think that the, the seminal point that I'd really like to make clearly is that cystectomy is best performed in high volume centers by high volume surgeons. Um, until we see a more proactive approach to centralization of cystectomy, um, particularly in, uh, in, in Australia, I don't think we will realize the best outcomes that we can for our patients. So whilst the, the robotic open option is always an interesting debate, I think really the elephant in the room is why are people still doing low volume cystectomy and low volume centers?